happen in life. Now let's talk about chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Let's welcome Dr. Sam. Okay, yes. questions. What are the underlying contributing factors for the development of bronchitis? So if you remember, bronchitis is uh, COPD, combined with so is SAPA, no? So can you tell uh, us? All right, Doc. Uh, in TCM uh, perspective, uh, bronchitis is an exterior condition because uh, a cough is the primary symptoms. And uh, the underlying condition, and that's going to be like uh, patterns of bow. Wind, uh, wind invasion or wind cold invasion, wind heat, dry heat, and then also it's um, hereditary or heredity. And um, all of this, we have factors that could affect like uh, lung chi deficiency, uh, spleen chi deficiency, and then spleen yang, kidney yang. Those things can affect or can be an underlying contributing factors for bronchitis. Okay, thank you. What is the smoker's disease commonly known? Well, as? according to the book, uh, <laughs> the smoker's disease is uh, COPD or emphysema, the, the okay. old name of COPD. Yes. Very good. Okay, can you tell us the underlying contributing factors for the development of emphysema? Well, uh, it's well. We know for a fact that the main contributing factor for uh, emphysema is uh, cigarette smoking, mm -hmm. and uh, one also is the allergy or repeated childhood res uh, respiratory infection. But uh, just like if we have this exterior pathogenic factor that could trigger emphysema, like a wind cold invasion and lung dampness, phlegm heat, lung chi deficiency, spleen chi deficiency, uh, phlegm stagnation, and then also blood stagnation. Okay. Now let's talk about asthma, the excess type. Can you tell us the etiology and pathology? Mm, excess type of asthma like uh, phlegm heat obstruction in the lung. Uh, that could be uh, that could disrupt the lung function in dispersing and descending of the chi. That's another. That's one type of the excess type of asthma, and then we have also lung attack by wind heat or accumulation and gelling of uh, turbid phlegm causing stagnation of the liver chi, which in turn uh, can cause blockage of lung chi. So invasion of wind coupled with wind heat or wind cold, phlegm dump and phlegm, uh, phlegm heat. Okay. What about the deficiency type of asthma? Can you tell us? Uh, the deficiency, deficiency type of asthma is two, uh, two organs is involved, like lung and kidney deficiency. And, you know, if this, if lung, uh, the downbearing function of lung and the kidney could not grasp it, then the lung will, uh, the, the chi will rebel. So that will result asthma. Okay, great. Now let's go to the liver patterns for asthma according to Machocha. Uh, liver, okay. Now, um, if liver is, if there is a liver chi stagnation, since liver is, the and uh, make sure that the smooth flow of chi and if the liver stagnated or the chi of the liver stagnated it will also hamper the down bearing function and dispersing of the lungs okay great what about liver fire well yes liver fire uh liver fire can insult the lung and we know for a fact that uh lung normally in curse cycle uh, normally controls um, the the liver, but this time, liver fire with insult the lung. Wow, and the uh, liver yin deficiency. Well, liver yin deficiency also will hamper and will um will hamper the uh what they call this. It will cause um 
dampness. I know it will cause sorry, <laughs> uh, heat in the lungs, and it will cause also liver yang to rise. Okay, thank you. Let's go to number seven. Can you tell us the signs and symptoms of invasion of wind coupled with heat or cold? Okay, now invasion of wind cold. Uh, wind cold invasion is one of the most common causes of colds. Uh, of course, and flu-like symptoms. Now we have similar, this is actually similar to common cold. And uh, however, the pathogen enters deeper into the lungs, uh, causing an acute asthma condition. So this condition, while an excess usually arises from deficiency, which can be treated after the acute symptoms are result. So the other symptoms is we're gonna have uh, chills, with no fever, aversion to cold, body aches and stiffness, no sweating, uh, with thin, clear, and or white phlegm, and uh, headache often back of the head and neck, sneezing and sore throat. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, invasion of wind coupled with uh, heat. Mm -hmm. So this time, uh, wind heat typically affects the lung and uh, of course, when the body is exposed to external pathogen, particularly during warmer weather or in where environments where pathogens of heat are prevalent. So symptoms can be uh, chills, headache, sore throat, and uh, stuffiness in the chest. And uh, of course, they're, uh, they're going to be cuffed with yellow thick phlegm, headache uh, in forehead or in temple, and aversion to wind, mild sweating, red eyes, or face. And the sputum is a mixture of saliva and mucus. Okay, and, uh, so let's talk about sputum then. Okay. <laughs> uh, sputum in Chinese medicine is a manifestation of uh, disharmony uh, within the body system. So actually, it's a mixture of saliva and mucus. Okay. Cough up from the respiratory tract. So typically as a result of an infection or other disease, an open examine the microscopically to aid medical diagnosis. And it is considered a form of pathological fluid that accumulates in the body due to imbalances in the organ system. Good. Now tell us the tongue and pulse picture of um, wind mm -hmm. invasion of heat. Okay. Yes, uh, since this is an exterior pathogenic factor, so expectedly, uh, the tongue is not red. It looks like normal in wind cold. And the coating is thin and white. And the pulse is floating and tight, since this is cold. Okay. Thank and you very much. For, <laughs> for the wind hit, though, yeah, uh, yeah uh, there would be a thin white coating on the tongue. I don't know, our tongue is red with thin yellow coating. And of course, the pulse for wind heat invasion is rapid for it is heat and is floating for it is exterior. Wow. Thank you so much, Dr. Sam. You did so great. Thank you, Doc. Congratulations.